Hey YouTube, Flight Sim Guy here. How you doing? And uh, I want to put together this quick video uh, because, considering I spent about three to four hours today, I finally cracked the code. I figured out how to configure your network, more specifically the the port forwarding configurations that you need to do, so that you can fly multiplayer sessions in. Flight Simulator X Steam Edition. All right, so let me paint the story. Uh, me and a fellow gamer, uh, he has FSX Steam, I have FSX Steam. Uh, we tried setting up a multi-session gaming, uh, you know, where we could fly together. Couldn't get it to work. Uh, couldn't create a connection. I did some research, and evidently, even if you do have a private uh, VPN network client, such as Hamachi, that doesn't work. You still need to do the port forwarding in your router, and in this video, I'm going to go through real quick how you need to do that. All right, so first up, let's take a look here. My PowerPoint presentation. All right, so to configure port forwarding, this is what you're going to need. You're going to need the IP address of the computer running the uh, flight simulation software. You're going to need the IP address of your router gateway. You're going to need the user ID and password to get into your router. And this information here is common knowledge. Now the hard part of what we're going to do here is knowing the user ID and password of the router. Most regular people who have uh, broadband internet, they never have to log into your router. But in this case, you're going to need to go in there and do a little bit of hacking. I'm going to try and make it as simple as possible. But this is a part that scares people off and it's really not that complicated. All right, so first things first. You need the IP address of the computer running Steam, and you need your router gateway address, uh, gateway IP address. That's very, very simple. All you need to do is hit the window key plus R. That's going to bring up the command uh, interface. Window key plus R. The window key is between function and alt. That should be standard on just about every installation or every version of Windows since XP. <sighs> bring up the command window and all you need to do is type IP config that's it hit enter forget about all of that the information that you're going to need is right here this is the IP address of the computer running FSX and this is your gateway IP address so let's go ahead and write that down and for those of you who saw, or think you saw, the IP address for my internet, if you want to try to hack into my network, knock yourself out. There's no way in hell you're coming in. All right, so let's go ahead and write those down. IP address for the computer running Steam and the default gateway. Now, the IP address of the computer running your game, most people have their computer set up to DHCP, which what that means is this address is going to change every time you turn your computer on. Some videos I've seen on YouTube says you need to change your IP configuration so that you have a, a static IP that does not change. You don't need to do that. The fact that it's dynamic, the fact that it changes all the time is not going to be an issue. So just go ahead and write down that number, which is 192.168.0.228 and the default is gateway 192.168.0.1 so go ahead and write those two numbers down and then the next thing you need to do is to log into your router now <clears throat> the default gateway that IP address right here all you need to do is and I'm gonna go ahead and open up a new tab just type that into your browser 192 dot one six eight dot zero dot one and you're gonna get faced with this now this interface is for this specific brand of uh, router which is a uh, uh, Motorola Aris or whatever the hell that is as a result <coughs> your interface once we get into the router is probably gonna look different from mine <coughs> But that's not going to be an issue because what you need to set up to do the port forwarding is the same principle. The interface might change, but it's the same information you're entering. Now, in my case, 
I've been in my router before, so I already have a, a custom password. If you've never logged into your router before, you may want to try one of the following username and password combinations. Admin for the username, admin for the password, or admin for the username, blank or nothing for the password, or root for the username and root for the password, or root for the username and nothing for the password, or administrator for the username and administrator for the password, or administrator for the username blank for the password. I think you get the idea. If none of those work, try using regular password all lowercase and see if that will get you in. The point is, a default router that's never been configured before is going to have one of those as the default credentials to get in there. If someone has been in the router before and has changed a password, you need to get that username password combination. If someone has gone in and changed a password and you don't know, know you don't know what that is, call your ISP and they will tell you or they will show you how to reset or to uh, essentially uh, roll back or restart or reset your router and clear out the password. And then once you have that, you can get in. Still with me? All right. So <clears throat> I already have my username and my password. I'm going to log into my router. And like I said, this particular configuration or this particular interface is unique to my type of router. What you want to do is to look for some advanced uh, tab or something like that. And what you're looking for is forwarding. Essentially, what you're going to do is do your port forwarding. And here is where you're actually going to come in and set up your port forwarding. Now, this is what I have set up for uh, my port forwarding to play FSX. I'm going to go ahead and do these again. So you click on create. And here is where you're going to enter the IP address of the computer that's hosting FSX. 0 0.228. Starting port 27001. Ending port. 27030. External IP, you want to leave this blank or leave this zeros. What this means is if you want to set up a gaming session where only one person on a different uh, network, what you do is they'd give you their IP address and once you punch that in, only they can see through your router. If you leave this open or if you leave this zeros, anyone on the internet who's smart enough can, in theory, get into your router because you haven't specified a specific IP address. <sighs> starting port or external starting port, same numbers here. Now you need to do this for both TCP and UDP. For my particular router, I can say both. And by default, I'm going to leave this off. Apply. Oop. All right, it's erring out on me primarily because I've already set it up. But the point is, that's how you set up the first line. The second line is essentially the same thing. The only difference is you're using different numbers for the starting port and the ending port. Now, when it's time to actually, and I have it disabled, it says no. But when you're ready to play, uh, a multi-session game with someone, all you need to do is hit edit and turn it on. And I'm going to do that right now. Alright, so I have these ports open in my router and any traffic coming through my router through these ports is going to get forwarded to the computer that's running FSX, which is this IP address right here. Okay? And this is how I knew that this hack actually worked. So my ports are forwarded. I'm going to go into FSX. Let me check to make sure you're still with me. And yes, you are. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a gaming session. Go to multiplayer and what you want to do is use your Steam ID, sign in, takes a second. All right. All right, so what you're going to do now is you're going to host a new session. So what you want to do is click host a session. And I'm going to go ahead and put uh, FSX multi session config. That's going to be the name of my train of my uh, uh gaming room. I'm going to leave it free flight session categories, it doesn't matter. Just make it flight training. Session description uh training video on how to configure port forwarding you put it, you don't need to put anything here i'm going to leave this password blank and when you leave it blank this training room is going to show up to the rest of the world on steam and anyone can join your room if you want to make it so that only one other person can join put a password in here and share it make this session visible to everyone on internet and on the local area network. Hit next. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to load a flight and in this case this is a flight that I did with a gaming friend of mine, Bell Geode, from Vandenberg Air Force Base to Nellis Air Force Base. Hit OK. And what this is going to do is hit next here you can specify how many players you want. Um, I'm going to leave it at 7. Uh, disable voice communication. Usually if you want to talk with someone else while you're flying, use Skype or something else. Share your aircraft. Use this for shared cockpit. I'll leave that off. Hit next. And here is my room. So one of seven slots taken waiting for players to join. What I'm going to do now is hit fly now. The ports are open in my router. I'm loading up an FSX session. In theory, since my room is not secure, another player who wants to play multi-session can simply join in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and sit here on mute and see if anyone joins. This will confirm if your room is set up properly or not. All right, so we're sitting here at Nellis Air Force Base in my F-18, or Nellis Vandenberg Air Force Base. I'm just sitting here. And... Let's see how long we're going to have to wait until someone joins the session. If I see a little red bar with a line scrolling across, that means someone else has joined the session. What that means is your room is showing up in the FSX uh, uh, lobby as a session that's open for joining. That's how I knew what I did worked. And um, when I set this up earlier, uh, people were just hopping in and out like crazy. So uh, there's no way you can tell after you've set up your own room whether it's actually there or not. If you try looking for it, you're not going to see it because you have to get out to see the list of uh, gaming rooms. But in theory, this should work. So let's just give it a second and see if anyone joins. And there we go. Player Blue Angel number one has joined the game. So what that tells me is someone sees my game room and they're like hey I'm just gonna go in here and fly and the thing is a lot of people that try to set up their own gaming sessions they can't get it to work so they go ahead and find another room that's unsecure or someone didn't put a password and they just go ahead and join it so they can fly so I know someone joined my game I can't see him but he's around here somewhere that's how you know that your game is configured properly strangers start joining in and if you want to lock it down, just go ahead and put a password and share that with whoever you want to fly with. And once I end this flight, that poor bastard is going to get kicked off. End flight. And he's gone. And I just want to say one more thing. This port forwarding setup, in my case, I can hop on, open up a browser, enter this IP address, and get here in two clicks. If I fire up my FSX computer, the computer that I'm going to be flying with, and I know that my IP address has changed, all I need to do is come in here, hit edit, and enter the new IP address. That's all you have to do. And once you're done playing, just hit edit, enabled, 
off. That way you don't need to erase it. Just go ahead and turn it off. So if you want to do a multi-session with someone, as long as you have your ports set up properly the first time around, all you need to do is log into your router and quickly change it from no to yes. Do your flying, and then when you're done, go ahead and disable them. You do not need to disable your Windows firewall. You do not need to disable any firewalls in any antivirus software that you're having or any antivirus software that you have running. And I think for the most part, that's it. So let's go ahead and do a quick review. If you want to configure port forwarding, you need the IP address of the computer running FSX. You need the IP address of your router gateway. You can get those by running the IP config command in your command window. You need the user ID and password of your router. Like I said, if you've never been in your router before, try any combination off, admin, root, administrator, and various passwords, either blank, the word password, or whatever the admin, whatever the admin uh, credentials are. Just if, it, if the admin is admin, just go ahead and try that in the password. Eventually, something will work. Otherwise, if you've been in before, go ahead and find it, pull it up, or call your ISP and tell them you want to log into your router, but you don't know how, you don't have the credentials. Once you're in your router, find your way to the port forwarding interface and forward Steam ports 27001 through 27030. Do that for both TCP and UDP, and do the same for port 6112 through 6122. Once you think you've gotten that running, or if you think you've gotten it right, follow what I did with regards to setting up a gaming session, make it open, and if people are joining, then you've done it right, and everything is working. And I think that's all I have. Flight Sim Guy here. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.